madam. Though Venus govern your desires, Saturn is dominator over mine, which signifies my deadly standing eye, my silence, and my cloudy melancholy. No, madam, these are no venereal signs. Vengeance is in my heart, death in my hand. Blood and revenge are hammering in my head. Hark, Tamra, the embers of my soul, which never hopes more heaven than rests in thee. This is the day of doom. I pray thee, do on them some violent death. They have been violent to me and mine. Well, hast thou lessened us? This shall we do. I will bring in the Empress and her sons, the Emperor himself and all thy foes at thy mercy. <laughs> shall they stoop and kneel? And on them shalt thou ease thy angry heart. Hello again everyone and welcome to episode 16 in my continuing series of video scenario guides. This one dedicated to Howling Gorge. Which is, honestly, uh, one I've always enjoyed playing. Uh, but before we get to that one quick uh, minor point, I just want to thank uh, Hello Kitty and the gang from Order of Bias for taking me in. I appreciate it, and we've had some uh, had some good fights already. There you go. All glory to the Hypnotoad. Okay, on to the matter at hand. Uh, today's episode, Howling Gorge, I've always found the map design here effective as it uh, features a central location for the battle for dominance. But additionally, it features a plethora of blocking terrain, corridors, twists, turns, corners that are often useful for scoring or preventing the opposition from doing so. Uh, if you have to, and often in this scenario you do, there are a number of places to hide, lurk, uh, and spring an ambush designed to thwart a scoring attempt and or get a kill or two. And given my basic in-game nature of playing the hunter-gatherer, uh, I always found that aspect of the scenario attractive. However, the main idea here is running the bomb. Uh, but I will attempt to cover that along with uh, other concerns as we progress through the video. Now before we get to the first video footage, let's take a look at the scoring mechanic. In Howling Gorge, two points are awarded for each kill, just as in Blackfire Basin and a number of other scenarios. The primary means to score points is equivalent to that in Talibic Dam, capturing and running the bomb to the detonation point and successfully depositing it there, and then get out of the way before it explodes. Uh, successfully planting the bomb yields 75 points for your side, and of course the process of both capturing and depositing the explosive barrel can be interrupted uh, by damage. A bomb carrier has only 90 seconds to deliver the charge before it will auto-destruct, uh, taking the carrier with it and you know, probably anyone who's uh, uh, very close by. Now all of this leads to tactics which are comparable to those discussed in a Talibak Dam video, except of course when accounting for the different terrain. And one more time, let me reiterate my uh, basic philosophy here in uh, producing these videos. And that is, uh, to win, you know, to put your team in the uh, optimum position, or optimal position to win the scenario based off of points. And to score points, you play to the mechanics of that scenario. So that's always the, uh, the approach taken to discussing, you know, how to play these things. Is, uh, you know, I don't talk about six-man builds. I don't talk about how to construct your forces when you log in. Uh, you know, I talk about playing the scenario to the mechanics and trying to score uh, the most points you can as quickly as you can and ultimately win. So with that in mind, let's take a look at our first video and discuss those mechanics in practice. Alright, so off we go. Uh, I pulled up the list here just so we can see who our opposition is. But as you can see, uh, in this case, we're all moving. We have good formation here. We're sort of moving together. We're moving with a purpose. Everybody's going to the same place, uh, which of course always helps. 
Now there's the powder keg. It's there at the beginning of the scenario, but we bypass it. And there's a reason that we're doing this. Uh, bypassing and running right into the opposition. And that is, a, it's a tactic you can employ here, both sides. But we're attempting to disrupt the opposition's attack. And that's valid in any scenario. That, uh, you know, if you can disrupt what your opponent is trying to do, then by default, that sort of aids your side. Okay, so we have the scrum going on here. Uh, as you can see, we're not getting many kills. But in context of playing uh, this how it Gorge, it's really not that important. What is important is creating your opportunities uh, to seize the powder keg and run with it. Now, destruction's kind of strung out here, but uh, part of this is by design. We're trying to keep them, as many of them as we can, down here in the ramp area. Now, the ramps mirror each other, uh, so both sides can do this, but if you can keep part of your forces down there, then uh, it, it creates an opportunity as you can see it allowed us this strategy sort of allowed us to get the first capture now the guy who picked it up this night of the blazing sun uh delano i think his name was a perfect choice in this sc to pick up the bomb and run with it oh uh, we don't have a white lion so like talibek dam you know you would want a white lion to run it if you had one or a squig herder for the other side but we don't so the knight is the uh, next best choice and a sword master would be uh, after that. Now, as you can see, well, I'm letting this video run for the, just, just to illustrate this point. Even though we picked the powder keg up first, we didn't score this this time, which means, of course, that uh, destruction had an intercepting force out there. Somebody intercepted the uh, bomb carrier and prevented them from scoring. And that's kind of critical here that uh, you dedicate. I mean, I would suggest dedicating a part of your force, even if it's just one guy, to attempting to do that. And you, know, you can slow the carrier down, and because, uh, like I said in the introduction, you only have 90 seconds anyway. All right, so seize your opportunities. I see an opportunity here to pick up the bomb, and I'm going to take it, even though there's fighting going on all, all around me. Now, I do pick up the disable, but. Uh, as you all know, when you pick up the bomb, the first thing you have to do is cross one of these bridges to get moving. But before you can cross the bridge, there is a task that you must perform. Stop! Who approaches the bridge of death must answer me these questions three. Uh, the other side, he see. Ask me the questions, bridgekeeper. I'm not afraid. Okay. <laughs> Just having a little fun there, but... Uh, so I've got the bomb, and I hit my charge because I saw the uh, knight was going to escort me. But this illustrates another sound tactic to employ, the lurking ambush. This Chosen was just lying in wait over there uh, for the opportunity to intercept the bomb carrier. Now, it's a good play, the sacrifice play, it's a sound play, and he doesn't make it, of course, because it's a 2v1 fight. But, you know, if he could slow me down at least enough, uh, long enough to prevent me from getting down here and scoring uh, before the uh, bomb goes off, then that's a perfectly valid sacrifice play. All right, so I'm going to fade at it. And we go back to the scrum. And the purpose of leaving this in is destruction had pushed up a little bit. But because we're still engaging them here, it allowed the uh, knight to pick up the powder cake again and take off with it. Now this time, I decide not to escort him. And uh, the reason I did that is because, you know, as I said, knight is a perfect choice to run the bomb. And I thought he would make it, uh, you know, given who was out there last time to uh, intercept. You know, I, I, I figured that he would be able to make it on his own. So I decided to stay here this round and assist with the, uh, again, with the scrub fight here. And as you can see, we're still keeping these guys tied up on the, in the ramp area, keeping them out of the bomb spawn point. And my dog just came in the room, so give me a moment. He was looking for a snack, because he knows I, I slip him food all the time. Uh, all right, now the reason I'm letting this video run is to illustrate two points. Uh, one what I, that I made earlier about 
tying your opposition up in the ramp areas and keeping them out of here. Now the Knight of the Blazing Sun, he, I knew he would score and he did, but what this does, pinning the enemy down in that scrum down there, uh, allows me to pick up the powder keg, powder keg again and take off. And we've sort of set up this pattern here that because the rest of order is doing what they need to do, keeping the enemy occupied, I and the knight can just trade off of uh, running the bomb. Now I left this section in to illustrate another point, uh, what I consider to be a, uh, you know, I wouldn't, call, I, actually I wouldn't call it a small mistake, it's a mistake on the forces of destruction. Why no intercept? Why is there no one down here to try to stop me? You know, it's not like I'm invincible or anything, I mean, uh, but they, they have no one out here. Now, they will, as you'll see in a few moments, but that is uh, an integral part of playing Howling Gorge. As, you, as I said earlier, you should have someone attempting to run the intercept. Now, we're maintaining the pressure here. Here we go again. Uh, the knight has picked up the uh, powder keg and taken off. And Chaos here is after him. And he's making, again, the sacrifice play, which, you know, is always... Okay, yeah, sure, this is a game, so nothing really, you know, has any lasting real world repercussions, but in context of playing the SC, this guy is doing uh, a service to his side. He's at least making the effort to get out here and stop us from scoring. And uh, because no one's helping him, he's, of course, unsuccessful, but that doesn't detract from the fact that you know, he, he made the effort. Which, when you're on defense, when your opposition is running the bomb, that's what you have to do. You have to at least make the effort uh, to prevent the score. Now here I go again, and uh, this time I have a Chosen immediately on me. But there's a little teamwork going on here. And I, I can tell you that during this SC, there was no communication at all going on between me and the Knight. We just sort of fell into this teamwork here and uh, helped each other score. Now I left this part in uh, so you can see the dot damage that I'm taking. Uh, I believe I have to make four attempts to capture the powder keg here before I'm finally successful. And there you go. And so they delayed me a little bit. And now I've got a squig carter on my tail. But once again, uh, the knight is uh, in position to sort of peel him off of me and allow me to make the run. Now I'm going to leave this, because something else occurs here in just a moment that I wanted to illustrate. And in this particular SC, yeah, okay, we're doing all the scoring, uh, but you can easily flip this to either side. And Now look, there's a Chosen down there. And now he's going to make uh, a, a move that I call a blocking maneuver. Uh, I had a, an example of this way back when I did Black Pirate Pass of an orc attempting to uh, keep me from capturing the flag. This guy's doing the same thing. His sole purpose of being down here is not necessarily to kill me, but do one of two things. He tried to pump me into an area where I would get stuck, and then I just had to stand there until the bomb blew up. Uh, that didn't work. Now he's just trying to dot me up, keep enough damage on me so that I can't deposit the explosive. But I was able to. Because if you watched the damage there roll by, uh, I got a few parries in, which prevented me from taking the damage and thus planting the bomb. I said that in the introduction. I'll put that in there just because I, I made the point in the introduction that when the bomb goes off, it, if you're next to it, you uh, will be sent to the hereafter. All right, I don't want to belabor this, but. Why did we win this scenario? Well, I can hear someone now saying, uh, because your opposition sucked, man. They were all stupid and weak. If I'd been there, I would've killed all you, man. All right, okay, so we all suck, right? But really, why did we win? Uh, first, we were able to manage the bomb spawn point. And that is an important consideration. We were able to keep destruction tied up and away from there so that we could run the bomb. And we did. Uh, now remember the context, what I always say. Uh, our focus here wasn't on our EP, and it was on winning the scenario. 
and that is the point of every one of these videos I've done is winning the scenario based on the mechanics of that particular scenario okay, in addition we had some teamwork here not all of it was conscious uh, I'm sure that some of the order players who were fighting in the scrum the entire time you know we're just trying to get some kills or whatever but by default they allowed us to run the bomb and score now true destruction did not interdict as much as they should have uh, you know they had a, two destruction players out of the entire scenario uh, made serious efforts to interdict the bomb runner and that just wasn't enough uh, but we were we won because we were able to play the mechanics and uh, score the points and take home the victory I'd have a few more segments of uh, video to lay out here talk about a little bit the first one this is from a tier one uh, uh, SC and everything looks smaller in tier one uh, everything moves slower <laughs> than what it is but uh, there's the bomb uh, this is why I put the video in uh, we get up to the uh, powder keg spawn point and there's no one no destruction around I had a little bit of lag here but there's no destruction around so I pick it up and take off running with my little uh, Night of the Blazing Sun here and that's the point I want to make with this particular video this particular segment is if you get moving out of your spawn point and this holds true for other scenarios I've said this many times uh, but I'm going to keep saying it in the hopes you know that it that it serves the greater good somewhere um, if you get to the powder keg spawn point and your opposition is not there then take the first score because you saw what happened just there another player uh, picked up the respawn and took off with it and so we're gonna get the first two scores and basically that allows us to go on and pretty easily win this scenario so now we're back to tier 4 uh, this is uh, just another example of the same thing our opposition in this particular SC uh, well <laughs> I call them boring but whatever but they're not here so I go ahead and pick up the uh, powder keg and take off and again the point I'm illustrating is if your opposition is going to give you a free score then by all means take it and uh, uh, wait how did Ant-Man get into my video <laughs> dancing Ant-Man at that that's uh that's kind of weird all right well anyway I'm still running because again if your enemy is going to allow you a free score and now my phone rings uh, it was just someone named Heather trying to sell me a new medical plan okay well you see the text there uh, you know if again if you have an opportunity to score then take it and then go back and fight <laughs> fight the battle now I have some video here to show the to illustrate what I talked about in the introduction the interception maneuvers and I really feel that in Howling Gorge particularly uh, this is a necessary it's not like Blackfire Basin where it's um, recommended you know where it can be effective I think here in Howling Gorge it's it's necessary to get out get somebody out here and attempt to inter, uh, interrupt intercede in, you know intercept the opposition's uh, attempt to score now they had escorts so the black gourd actually or, uh, the dock I mean black gourd yeah that's a new class we need a black gourd but anyway the dock intercepted me and then uh, the other escorts you know showed up and I have to sort of fight this uh, three-on-one battle the point remains the same I talked about uh, in the introduction that there are places to hide here here's an example of that and uh, I think I mean I'm, I, you know, I think I would have won this fight and actually prevented the score except that he had friends and now it's a uh, four-on-one fight so we all know how that's gonna end and then finally uh, we have two actually three of us that are out here to intercept and here's a good little white line pounce from cover and so we go up and uh, waste this magus here um, and I'm gonna let this run for a minute because 
it also illustrates a positioning fault a positioning mistake that our opposition makes and so the three of us go up and look there's a bunch of destro guys up here they were fighting someone but while they're all over here another of our guys has picked up the powder keg and now destruction's out of position they're in, you know they're on the opposite side and they have absolutely no uh, chance to cut this guy off but since we're over here we have the perfect opportunity to cut some of them off and I always recommend and you know most of you guys know this maybe some new people of the game don't but you know this is always a stra sound strategy and I see it you know a lot of different people in game do this where you try to cut off the tail end of a moving line and get a few kills and just disrupt your opposition. Now in case anyone wonders, this particular segment of video I did use prior. This was uh, taken from a video I did a few months back called Swords of the Everqueen. So the fact that uh, you know Zach's there is using his emote, this is nothing new. This has been seen before and in all sincerity I don't want, you know, I don't want Zach's I know we got once got in trouble for using the emote, so this video is old. So, you know, please don't make anything of it. Um, the dominating message. I've talked about this uh, in prior SCs, and the truth is, until I was actually editing this video, it I, I didn't occur to me that uh, the dominating message was one that you could get here. And as silly as that may sound, it just never occurred to me. But there it was. Now watch the point totals. In Howling Gorge, once you get the dominating message, uh, it looks like five points a second. And at five points a second, it's just not going to take you any time at all to build up an insurmountable score or just, you know, go on to win. So I, it's difficult to say in, or to suggest in this particular SC that you push for that. But that option is out there, which is why I wanted to illustrate it. As I've said before, I don't, I don't really like uh, spawn point camping, uh, you know, hurting somebody up into their uh, uh, starting location. I've just always found that boring. So, um, all right, now I have one more little segment of video here, and it's to illustrate another point from the introduction that if you're carrying a powder keg and your timer runs out this is what happens now this video goes back a while uh, I I mean I think I was rank 40 when I captured this video but um, it does go back a ways but I found it so I just thought I would include it for that very point right there and I think also the timer has been reset since I captured this video the timer for carrying the powder keg uh, was reset by the devs but you know if you can slow your enemy down or if the enemy slows you down, then uh, that's the net result. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna. That, that's it. I'm not gonna belabor this any longer. And uh, it's time for the overall review for Howling Gorge. So the first point is the only logical opening move in this SC is to get to the powder cake. And if your opposition isn't there, take the first score. They're handing you 75 points, so just take it. And, uh, you know, and you don't need your whole team to go with you. But anyway, while fighting at the mid, attempt to keep your uh, opponent locked up on the... Uh, oh, there he is again. <laughs> anyway, fight your opposition uh, in the lead-up ramps if you can. Keep them, you know, as many of them as possible off of where the powder keg uh, spawns. Block and our intercept. Now... As I said, I think this is essential here in Howling Gorge. And, uh, you know, get some guys out, a couple of them, maybe three, depending on what's going on at mid. But get a couple guys out and intercept your opposition. Either block right where the drop off point is, or just, you know, hide somewhere and ambush them as they come around. What I mean by this, that the terrain favors a defender, is those who are attempting to intercept. The terrain favors you. So use it to uh, to match yourselves until the last possible moment. And I think you know many times you'll find that you'll be successful. 
Well, the opposite of that, of course, is when running the powder keg, you want to escort, you know, one or two guys maybe. Um, but the main point of the, uh, of the force is to maintain control of the mid. And if defending, uh, you know, get at least two guys out there defending again if you're trying to defend from being scored upon. The dominating message, you know, again, I don't suggest that that's what you play for. But if it comes up, then very quickly, uh, you're going to win the scenario. Okay, that's about it, I suppose, and that will bring us to the end of episode 16. Episode 17, we're going to take a look at Phoenix Gate, and I have, I'm going to use Phoenix Gate footage to make a couple of other points about, you know, game-related uh, aspects that just happen to occur in Phoenix Gate. But until then, thanks for watching, I do appreciate your time. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you a bit later. Atlas, sit. 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 All right, you can give him a piece. That's a good dog. Sit. Oh, where are you going? There you go. Sit. All right, one more. <laughs> this is my stupid dog who keeps interrupting my videos.